as their vaccination rate surpasses neighboring countries. Six more field hospitals to be built. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. You're watching News at 10. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Malaysia's vaccination rate has surpassed Indonesia, Thailand, the Philippines and Vietnam as of yesterday. National COVID-19 Immunization Program, PICK Coordinating Minister Kari Jamaluddin said this includes individuals who have, who have at least received their first COVID-19 vaccine shot. Kari, who is also Science, Technology and Innovation Minister, said the government has set a target of giving 150,000 vaccine shots per day by June before increasing them to 200 thousand shots by July. He said the target could be achieved through the establishment of more vaccination centers, including 1,000 private clinics nationwide, as well as through the drive-through system. Meanwhile, Khairi said vaccine administration centers would also be open at the industrial and manufacturing areas in the upcoming weeks. Saya juga akan uh, maklumkan kepada yang mempunyai Tung Menteri berkenaan dengan cadangan untuk membuka PPP di kawasan industri, uh, di kawasan industri Bantu Pas dan juga Bantu Kawan uh, supaya pekerja-pekerja yang terpaksa bekerja sewaktu PKP ini uh, dapat uh, diberi kemudahan vaksinasi untuk melindungi mereka. He said this after visiting the Spice Arena PPV in Bayanapas with Pulau Pinang Chief Minister Chao Konyao. Khairi said that the vaccination centre at the Spice Arena would be used as the AstraZeneca vaccination centres starting 7 June, with a total of 133,000 doses had been prepared for the first round of dispensing the vaccine. He added that the government is also looking into the proposal to set up vaccination centres in the Bayanapas and Batukawan industrial areas to facilitate the vaccination process for workers who have to work during the movement control order. The total number of deaths from COVID-19 in the country has surpassed the 3,000 mark today as Malaysia records 103 deaths in the last 24 hours. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah said the deaths, which was the second day running at over 100, now bring the cumulative number of deaths from the deadly disease to 3,096. New COVID-19 cases grew for a third consecutive day in Malaysia to hit 8,209 today. Tansuri Dr. Nur Hisham said Selangor continues to record the most daily cases at 3,125 in the last 24 hours, followed by Kuala Lumpur and Johor came in second and third respectively, with 801 and 752 cases each. Today also saw 7,049 patients had made full recovery and were discharged from health facilities nationwide, taking the total number of recoveries in the country to 508,947 cases. The health DG also reported as of this afternoon, there are 83,331 active cases in the country with 880 patients currently receiving treatment in the ICU while 446 others requiring respiratory support. Meanwhile, Tansuri Dr. Nur Hisham announced 24 new clusters today where 19 of them were workplace-related bringing the number of active clusters to 683. The Malaysian Armed Forces ATM will be opening another six field hospitals to treat COVID-19 patients. With this, there are a total of eight field hospitals currently active in the country. Senior Minister for Security, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, said these hospitals are open following the extra allocation announced under the Pomerka Surplus Initiative by Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin on Monday. Mengenai Hospital Medan, setakat hari ini kemampuan kita untuk tambah dua lagi dan Perdana Menteri menyebut jelas tentang 
Hospital Medan oleh Angkatan Tentera maka dengan peruntukan baru ini kita boleh menambah enam lagi Datuk Seri Ismail Sabri was met at Sungai Besi Camp where he also announced that a drive-through vaccination center will be open for 480M personnel. He explained that the Sungai Besi Camp will be a pioneer location for the initiative, adding that it will eventually be open for the members of the public, allowing them to receive their vaccine jabs. In a related development, over 600 vaccines distribution centers PPV, including mega and temporary PPVs, are to be set up nationwide by the end of this year. According to Deputy Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation Mosti, Dato Ahmad Amzat Hashim, the additional PPVs aim to accelerate the vaccination rate to achieve herd immunity in the country before December. Datuk Ahmad Amzad said there are currently 357 PPVs in the country and the number is expected to increase to accommodate the incoming vaccine supplies. In Terengganu, pioneer project of mosque PPVs will be initiated soon to increase awareness among Muslims regarding the ongoing COVID-19 national vaccination program. As of yesterday, 13 million or 50% of Malaysians have registered for the national inoculation drive while over 3 million COVID-19 vaccine doses had been administered. Kada uh, vaksinasi secara keseluruhan di PK Kebangsaan kita 6.4%. Kita baru 6.4%. Insya-Allah apa ni melihat kepada uh, jadual penghantaran vaksin kita menjakakan apa ni kita menerima bekalan vaksin lebih banyak di dalam bulan Jun, Julai dan Ogos maka kerana itu perancangan sedang dibuat untuk membolehkan apa ni lebih banyak PPV dibuka dan lebih banyak kaedah apa ni vaksinasi dilaksanakan the Deputy Minister said this during site visit at the Terengganu's Science and Creativity Centre PSKT. To date, 11,000 doses had been administered in the centre and there are zero side effect cases reported. Coming up, meeting not the sole determinant in deciding essential service sectors. International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Seri Muhammad Azmin Ali has clarified that the ministry is not the sole determinant in deciding whether or not a certain business sector is considered an essential service. He explained that to date, a total of 15 ministries have used the COVID-19 Intelligent Management System CIMS 3.0 to facilitate the evaluation process of applications to operate under their respective sectors. Elaborating further, Datuk Sri Azmin said the ministry would still need to determine and verify which businesses are essential before issuing the permits. Ini membuktikan bahawa surat kebenaran beroperasi hanya akan dikeluarkan oleh CIMS 3.0 Setelah kementerian-kementerian yang mengawal selia sektor yang dibenarkan beroperasi memberikan pengesahan kepada pihak MITI. The senior minister added that a total of 586,308 companies with a total workforce of 10.2 million registered under the CIMS 3.0 administered by the Ministry of International Trade and Industry MITI as of this morning. Datuk Sri Azmin also said that there were several cases of fraudulent applications that had been detected and action had been taken against them. He said the ministry is working with Cybersecurity Malaysia and several IT experts to strengthen the CIMS portal and prevent system leaks. Kita telah mendapat nasihat daripada pakar-pakar IT ketika berlaku sedikit gangguan pada hari sebelum hari pertama ya 31st of May uh, tapi sekarang baik 
Uh, penguatkuasaan saya kata kita akan fokus untuk mulai in fact immediately after we implemented uh, MCO 3.0 on the 1st of June memang kita sudah ada di lapangan The investigation report into the 24th May light rail transit and LRT train crash will be submitted at the cabinet meeting next Wednesday. Transport Minister Datuk Seri Dr. Wee Ka Siong in a statement today said the report would entail recommendations to improve public transport safety and to prevent such an incident from occurring again in the future. Datuk Seri Dr. Wee said the government will continuously search for ways to improve the safety of public transport for users regarding it as a paramount priority. He said an investigation committee led by the Transport Ministry MOT's Secretary General, Datuk Isam Isha, was formed immediately after the incident and they were given 14 days to complete the investigation and inform the Cabinet. The investigation sought to determine the contributing factors that led to the mishap involving trains 40 and 81 and is not for the purpose of apportioning blame for liability or any party. Datuk Seri Dr. Wee said during the course of of the investigation, the committee examined the various aspects of operations by reviewing the Standard Operating Procedure SOP, Operating Manual, Real Book and other related guiding documents. Data collected from closed-circuit television, CCTV recordings, interviews with persons involved with the operations and technical discussions with the technology suppliers have formed the bulk of the report. The investigation committee members also conducted a site visit to the Klanajaya LRT Operation Control Centre on 1st June with a collision simu simulation session held by Prasarana Malaysia Berhad on the same day to give further insight into the incident. In Shah Alam, a grilled chicken seller was charged in the Sessions Court with attempting to bribe a police officer last month. The accused Muhammad Niza Muhammad Lazim, 36, who is also a part-time air conditioner technician, pleaded not guilty after the charge against him was read before Judge Rihaida Rafi'i. He was accused of abetting his friend Abdul Aziz Abdullah Elias Sharif, 38, to give a 120,000 ringgit bribe to ASP Muhammad Izzuddin Zulkifli, 38, who is attached to the Narcotics Crime Investigations Department of the Pahang Contingent Police Headquarters. The money was an inducement not to take legal action against Abdul Aziz, who had committed an offence under Section 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. The charge was made under sections 17 subsection B and 28 subsection 1 subsection C of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MACC Act 2009. An orphanage caregiver was slapped with a total of 100 charges of physical and non-physical sexual assault on two minors by the Ipoh Sessions Court. The accused pleaded not guilty and claimed trial to all charges framed under the Sexual Offences Against Children Act 2017 before Judge and Priscilla Hemamilini. According to the charge sheet, the accused faced 98 charges under Section 14, Subsection A of the Act for inappropriately touching two brothers aged 13 and 10 and two charges under Section 15, Subsection A for making them expose their private parts. He is said to have committed the offences at several locations including a welfare home and an apartment in Cameron Highlands between 1st November last year to 9th April. The court then set bail at 34,000 ringgit with one surety and fixed 3rd September for remission. But first, a preview into the upcoming match between Harimau Malaya and United Arab Emirates. Though the national squad lost both friendly matches ahead of the second round of the 2022 World Cup, 2023 Asian Cup qualifiers campaign against the United Arab Emirates UAE, head coach Tan Cheng Ho said the games benefited his charges. The 53-year-old coach said despite the national squad's 4-1 defeat against Kuwait and 2-0 loss to Bahrain, the matches still served their purpose to keep his boys prepared for the Group G campaign, especially against tonight's opponent, the UAE. Saya rasa uh, kita mampu uh, 
menyekatlah serangan-serangan mereka of course uh, at the same time uh, yang penting uh, kita kena turun ke ke padang dengan satu keyakinan dan uh, fokus uh, setiap saat atau setiap minit lah dalam perlawanan kita tidak boleh rasa terlalu gemuruh lah apabila uh, turun menentang UAE nanti walaupun mereka ada sokongan penyokong atau bermain di lapangan sendiri Malaysia who are ranked 153rd in the world are set to face a tough challenge against world number 73rd UAE at the Zabil Stadium Dubai later tonight. The last time Malaysia managed to defeat the UAE was a 2-0 victory in a friendly backed 1982. Overall in 14 clashes, Malaysia only managed to win thrice, draw twice and lost 9 times. That concludes this evening's news at 10. In our top story, Malaysia vaccination rate surpasses neighbouring countries. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Stay tuned to Saluran Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening.